Hey guys, it's Kevin. Today we're going to fix this code of uh, death, zero three three zero zero, like one two three four or six. So this printer has a zero three three zero one. Uh, most of printer I say it's a zero three three zero zero six. Uh, if you just go Google uh, BCH Epson error code, and they will give you a link to Epson triple secret error codes. And uh, on this, it's a really long document. Just do a search for 03300, and you can see uh, if it's uh, 0331, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, most likely there's something wrong with your main board. You can also text the keyword EPR to this phone number, and I'm going to just uh, reply this link to, the, to your phone, so you can just look up on your phone. I assume you will be able to disassemble or un uncasing your uh, uh, WF, uh, like say, SM720. Um, so if you can't, I'll put a link above, and uh, uh, you can you can you can watch that video and uh, take your the motherboard or mainboard out. And also today's uh, video is not for everyone. You have to have already steady hands and uh, all the equipment. So. Uh, at some point in time, you say, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'll let, let Kevin do it. Yeah, I can do it for you. So you just go to bchtechnology.com, go to printer repair service. And uh, we do have a uh, main board repair, but uh, you should be able to take the main board out. Then, then you can ship the main board to us, and uh, we repair it for you uh, for $50. Or uh, you can send the whole printer in, and uh, that's going to cost a little bit more for the for the shipping. But uh, uh, regular stuff like this is pretty much uh, regular printer is fifty dollars. Um, okay, it's in today's rate. Okay, and maybe five years from now it's like a, a thousand U.S. dollars or something. Uh, for example, regular printer if it's under twenty five pounds, that's most printer is, and right now it's the base rate is fifty dollars. If you got really super heavy printers, and it'll be more. And they've got a super, super heavy one, it'll be more. Okay, so regular printer is pretty reasonable priced. We got ourselves a multimeter, so when it's a closed circuit, uh, it will beep. Now we take the main board and looking for something marked with F. Uh, do you see it? Uh, there it is. Okay, uh, we got F2, F3, so where is F1? Let me give you a hint. If F1 is on the other side of the main board, okay, we're going to work on the F2 and F3 for now. And uh, like, let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. So we're going to test if uh, the F2 and F3 that's still good. Okay, there we go. So F2 feel like it blow out. Do you hear anything? No. F3 is good. One more chance. No, it's dead. Yeah, when you send it in, we also check for other components, such as capacitors, other things. And that's why people, wow, oh, you charge $50 for just for a little fuse. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we do. Oh, since you're here already, um, another thing easy to get, get blown out after blow off this fuse is those uh, Infineon uh, MOSFET. It's right here. And uh, so you probably want to check those MOSFET too. Uh, since today's video is for do it at home, so I will try to keep it uh, PG-13. So uh, I'm not going to talk about those MOSFETs. Normally, if you get a F2 blowout, those MOSFETs are okay. But uh, if you have a F2 working, uh, uh, you have to check those MOSFETs. You can see for this board, both of them dead. And this board, both of them working. So different member they have a different problem, but most likely you get one of them blown out. I forgot to show you uh, how where it's F1 fuse. There's another F1 fuse that's the uh, other side of the, the board. But what you can see is a different motherboard have different configurations. So I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to have a document that's uh, document all the positions, so it's easier for you to find. Uh, you can go to bchtechnology.com and just type in F1. And uh, this is the fuse we're going to use today to replace. You can replace F1, F2, F3, all the fuses. And uh, in the product description, 
uh, I'll try to show you where the F is. What the F is? <laughs> okay, for example, for 26, uh, 50 is right here, call F1. And uh, for eco tanks, they call it F200 or something, 2301 right here. And uh, then get F1 uh, right here. And the Samsung 20 F1, F2, uh, I forgot to put F1. F, F1 is on the backboard. On the backboard, you're going to see three, uh, three cables for three FFC cable connections. And it's below that FFC connection. I'm going to put another picture here for to help you. So for other traditional main board, it's right here. Uh, oh, by the way, to support me, just click Add to Cart and buy it. Uh, just show you how small it is. Um, yeah, let's show you my dirty finger and how small it is. The bottom side is all, all white, and uh, the correct side is black. So if you see it all white, you want to flip it over, and uh, look much better. I'm not going to show off my soldering skills. Uh, there are better tutorials. Uh, just go to YouTube and search for SMD soldering. I think SMD is a surface mount device, and uh, my starting skill sucks, so <laughs> that's why I'm not showing off that. Uh, you can see you really can't breathe hard when you do this. There you go. Ah. Oh, by the way, there's a SMD practice uh, toolkit you can buy, so you can solder some uh, other components before you solder these uh, more expensive ones. Okay, uh, looking good. I can't let you go before showing the where F1 is. So you take this, so you'll see three connections for FFC cables. Do you see the F1? Right there. Your F2 is the one go first. So if F2 is blown out, F1 will be okay. <laughs> Strange. Okay, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, please visit us at www.bchtechnologies.com or locally at Greensboro, North Carolina. Wow, look at those nice looking MOSFETs.